Welcome to On the Waterfront. I'm your host, Mariah Riggs, director of the Main Street Landing Performing Arts Center. Today, I'm really excited to have two guests on the show today. Uh, my first uh, guest is Sandrine, who's the director of housing advocacy programs at CVOEO, and Jess Hyman, who's the associate director of housing and advocacy programs at CVOEO. Thank you, ladies, for coming on the show. Oh, thank you for having us. It's so exciting to have you here. So um, just to kind of get into it really quickly, um, what does CVOEO do? Oh, wonderful. So CVOEO, uh, which is the Champlain Valley Office of Economic Opportunity, is one of the five community action agencies run, uh, serving the northern uh, part of Vermont. Uh, what we do is uh, providing um, gap services to people that experiencing a sort of a crisis. Mm -hmm. uh, we have 13 programs at this time, which, you know, the, whole, the housing advocacy programs have four, uh -huh. actually include group four of them. Okay. Um, and um, we uh, are an agency that really focuses not only at providing direct services, mm -hmm. but are really advoc uh, advocating for the vulnerable yeah. community members that we have in the state of Vermont. It, this includes definitely trying to help them with the basics, the first basics uh, needs that they have, such as housing, food, um, education for very young children, oh. avoidization, and more. That's amazing. So there's a lot that people can go to the Champlain Valley House Office of Economic Opportunity and like reach out to you guys if they need help with certain things. Correct. Um, that's a pretty wide net that you cast. Um, and so your specific role and what you guys do is the advocacy component. You said that's four programs? Yes, four statewide programs. So um, CVOEO um, is the only agency who has actually four statewide programs focusing on advocacy, yeah. uh, housing advocacy at that. Uh, we um, do uh, operate the Vermont tenants, mobile home, um, um, the uh, housing family uh, voucher uh, program, and also the Fair Housing Project. Mm -hmm. uh, those four programs um, do provide uh, education, mm -hmm. Uh, direct service, of course. Um, we do advocate uh, in front of the legislature every year. Um, we also provide community, some community organizing mm -hmm. support. Uh, retention services when it comes to housing, um, people that are actually experiencing some housing issues with their landlords or financial. Um, and uh, you know, the, 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 the most um, important when it comes to fair housing, because Jess is going to talk about the fair housing por por you know, por portion in education, because um, this is uh, one of our expertise. Um, uh, we, we, we do, as a, a statewide organization, uh, programs, let's mm -hmm. say, um, we really focus on working on the ground and we identify the needs that the community has, mm -hmm. and we adapt our services and programs to actually meet or try or support mm -hmm. those needs. So it's sort of, it, so it's very much a grassroots organization. Correct. And it's need-based. So mm -hmm. what happens is the people out there who actually need your services, who reach out to you and need those advocacy is what actually drives your mission? Ex exa Go ahead. Exactly. And then all the work that we do as an organization is grounded in um, in, in, in <laughs> social, racial, economic, and environmental justice. And so when, in for our, our statewide housing advocacy programs, folks will contact us if they're experiencing challenges in their rental housing, mm -hmm. um, or if they're being treated unfairly um, based on who they are in their housing, or if they're living in a mobile, uh, in a manufactured home community and mm -hmm. have questions or supports. And, and do you sometimes work with organizations? I would assume in the mobile home community specifically, 
uh, there's a lot of parks that have uh, you know residential communities and stuff that reach out to you. Uh, indeed, we work with uh, communities and we work with individuals. Mm -hmm. uh, we have partners through specifically through the Fair Housing Project. We work with um, you know uh, housing providers, municipals, mm -hmm. um, libraries. <laughs> uh, so we have a lot of different partners because we do understand that the uh, uh, solutions to our crisis when it comes to housing need to include everyone every actor important uh, important and recipients to mm -hmm. the discussion to the, the to the the, 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 the design mm -hmm. of uh, some type of uh, system change that we are working for which is wonderful and towards. and you know I, I I think part of it too is I was really excited about this interview because I feel like specifically the work that you do um, is so incredibly important it's in the front of a lot of people's minds right now uh, mm -hmm. because what's happening in the news around housing and and um, rent problems uh, people being able to afford housing uh, not only in Vermont but nationwide mm -hmm. and uh, you guys are very much in the forefront of dealing with these issues that are very pertinent right now mm -hmm. uh, to what's happening in the world and so I just wanted to also talk to you uh, first of all I want to thank you <laughs> for dealing with this for so long it, it it's really crucial um, to our to Vermont monitors and to what they're facing right now and I just wanted to get a sense from you guys because um, it's uh, you know this week we had some pretty big news um, there was the 11th hour extension of the motel program in Vermont mm -hmm. and I just wanted to kind of get a sense from you uh, a what that meant for you what that meant for you and your clients um, and, and how that fight went for you guys because I know you were probably a part of that at the State House. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it was really, really exciting news yesterday. Um, and you know, where the legislative session ended, mm -hmm. uh, well, before the veto session, was a really strong budget that had a huge amount of wins for the affordable housing world. There was a lot of money dedicated to, to affordable housing development and almost full statutory funding for the Vermont Housing and Conservation Board, which um, supports aff affordable housing development all over the state. And there was a lot of money that went towards services and and other resources to folks experiencing homelessness mm -hmm. and and people looking to uh, purchase homes and there wasn't a solution to the, mm -hmm. one of the biggest problems housing problems we have in our state yeah. which is the fact that so many people don't have access to safe stable and affordable homes um, and with the end of the pandemic era um, hotel program there were going to be thousands of people who were cast out onto the street. Um, and luckily, the House, the Senate, and the administration were able to come together for a, comp a compromise. It happened at the last minute. It would have been really nice if it had have happened earlier, or even a couple of years earlier. Um, but as of yesterday, with this new um, new bill that was passed, um, m most of the people who are currently in hotels will be able to stay through through the winter. It didn't wow. fix everything. I didn't, um, I didn't realize it was through the winter. That's, that's wonderful. Yeah. And by the way, congratulations, because I don't know if the viewers are aware of this, it was the fastest veto override in the state's <laughs> history. Mm -hmm. um, which is actually saying something in the state house. <laughs> so, uh, so, so kudos on that. And it is such a pertinent and important issue. Um, and I think everybody's seen it. And I hear about it all the time. Um, it, you know, it's hard to, you know, keep a roof over your head in the state of Vermont right now. Um, and the interest rates aren't helping. You know, there's a lot of factors that are sort of driving besides, you know, there's 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 I income equality, there, there's there's racial issues, and again, environmental issues, a lot of those things that you cited that you tend to deal with with your advocacy program that are feeding into sort of this uh, maelstrom of, um, I, I would say, a pretty pertinent um, housing crisis mm -hmm. across mm -hmm. the state. Yeah. Right. Um, and so, um, and I think everybody feels that, and you could see that yesterday with that veto override, mm -hmm. um, which in politics is very rare. So that's a good thing. Yeah. Yeah, it was a good day. <laughs> it, it was a good day for for housing in Vermont. Now, so um, so kind of getting into that, you know, I this is very interesting. You just mentioned a bunch of things in that um, in that bill that I was not aware of. So I kind of wanted to. Everybody hears about the motel program, mm -hmm. but it sounded like there were some other things in that program that I kind of wanted to dig out from you um, and, and and hear about more. Sure. Well, in the the budget itself mm -hmm. um, had a lot of, of really good and investments in long-term affordable housing. And that's what we need, because we need both things. We need the crisis support, we need mm -hmm. the uh, 
the opportunity for people to have a roof over their heads and get, get connected to all the supports and resources that our organization and others offer. Um, and we need permanent long-term affordable housing and there needs to be something in between. And so that's where the work needs to happen, that's something in between. <laughs> Yeah, I, and I and I think, and and I and I think I'm, I was actually wanted to ask you, where are you seeing the need the most? Mm -hmm. You know, as, as you kind of look at it systemically, where where are you seeing the need develop the most? Um, right now, we with uh, this veto, we somewhat um, did um, postpone <laughs> a, a, a housing crisis situation that. Um, would have been devastating. Mm -hmm. um, uh, for how long? That's the question that we need to ask ourselves. Uh, proposition were placed uh, in front, uh, I know, uh, the legislatures uh, about very um, sometimes uh, risky uh, solutions uh, at the table. Um, and um, although the uh, it seems like that this uh, specific uh, bill uh, does provide some kind of a relief. Mm -hmm. We need to work towards sustainable, yeah. affordable, and fair housing. Yeah. That's supposed to be um, a, a practical way of thinking, mm -hmm. right? But um, since we are where we are, we did get where we are, knowing that that might have happened, mm -hmm. um, tells me that um, the the focus needs to be in prevention more than anything else. We mm -hmm. always react very quickly and look at the the timing of the veto. You said it yourself; it was a yeah. quick yeah. to yeah. do. Yeah. Prevention, prevention. I was not saying that the state uh, has done uh, some um, particular improvement mm -hmm. uh, and investment in uh, providing this type of support, yep. such as financial rental assistance, mm -hmm. um, and you know, really put money into transitional housing, uh, yep. but the, 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 the services, the support that um, mm -hmm. we have seen on the ground mm -hmm. for these families to be navigating this very complicated mm -hmm. system, to be educated in the fact that um, they have rights but also responsibilities. Mm -hmm. The fact that they do not know where to turn to or even if mm -hmm. they know, we as organizations supporting, supporting uh, vulnerables have not the capacity, we have not even the uh, ability to, pro mm -hmm. to, to, to actually improve it, and not even that, innovatively, the services that we provide. Mm -hmm. Because it is based on community needs mm -hmm. and because we have seen COVID-19 <laughs> and yeah. we've seen mm -hmm. what it has actually actually brought up to the surface, we need to adapt as well. But how do we do that when we don't have actually yeah. the financial support and the manpower to do so? So really thinking on retention, mm -hmm. prevention, mm -hmm. transition. Yeah. Yeah. Supports and, and something that's sustainable too. Correct. I mean, because yeah. let's be honest, keeping people in motel rooms is kicking the can down the road it's for somebody else to deal with it. And but I know that's the that, end of yes. the winter. And I know that <laughs> just yeah. we, we talk about the scarcity in actually yeah. Yeah. getting no. to affordable yeah, right? housing. I mean, so so what do you do with the thousands <laughs> of people that you've taken care of for eight mm -hmm. months, mm -hmm. and yet do you have the support services in order to find them the jobs or the means, or mm -hmm. do we have even have the housing capacity? Exactly. Exactly, and, that, and that's what we don't have yet, because it takes, you know, even even with all sort, of, you know, even if hundreds, thousands of units in the works all over the state, it's still not enough. And then once these units are built, then it, it, folks have to be able to have choice and opportunity in accessing those homes. And so it, it's it's a challenge. And I think that we're, you know, there's a lot of really great work happening all over the state. You know, with nonprofit and for-profit housing developers with all the social service service agencies that are working so hard to connect all uh, to, to connect folks with services you know our educational uh, programs too are part of that prevention and retention piece so what are your education programs yeah so with uh, with Vermont tenants and fair housing we have a series of uh, educational workshops that 
help folks with the rights and responsibilities involved with Vermont rental and fair housing law. Mm -hmm. And then on the, on the mobile home side, we also do a, a lot of education and training around resident organizing. Oh, and so, which is obviously, the crucial point of having mm -hmm. you know mobile parks, the, the residency program is like what helps elevate everybody in those communities. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah, because mo mobile home communities yeah. are in su are such a unique situation where people may own their home but rent their land. Mm -hmm. um, and Vermont has a really am amazing diversity of mobile home park types, mm -hmm. you know, privately owned, co-ops, um, and nonprofit owned as well. And so all of our uh, education programs really focus on helping people get access to the information and the resources and also the confidence to uphold their rights and to know where to turn when something does go wrong um, and and to 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 keep stability in their homes. Which can be really hard if you're dealing with a lot of, um, you know, issues at home, you know, uh, when you're dealing with uh, a lot of stressors, like things like economic stressors, mm -hmm. you know, uh, family illness. Yeah. There's a lot of different varying factors that can put a lot of weight on people especially, um, and, and, and that can actually affect their financial capacity to have housing. Um, and so the number one thing I would assume, especially since there are organizations, like you were saying, out there. And I Really quickly, I just wanted to, if you guys want to do a plug for some of the organizations out there, um, I know you guys are great, but uh, some other organizations in case people are watching that can also help people um, with housing issues. Um, Sure. I mean, there's the, the Community Action Network. So okay. there are five community action agencies all over the state, mm -hmm. um, and each one provides that emergency housing services. There's also the um, you know, the economic, state economic services division for immediate housing support. Okay. So if someone if someone is is literally homeless um, and and looking to get mm -hmm. a roof over their head for, for the night. Um, financial support as well. Yep, uh, the same ne the network. Mm -hmm. yep. okay. uh, Vermont Legal Aid provide mm -hmm. legal oh, assistance they do. services. Yep. Yes. Okay. Which is great, and, and that can be really difficult too because, um, you know, I know we see it a lot in Burlington, you know, landlords can get an idea and, and, and rents can go up and things can happen and then when people are evicted, mm -hmm. uh, there's nowhere for them to turn. Yeah. And, um, you know, I, I just know this from my own personal experiences that sometimes the bureaucracy of support services and help can be very limiting. Um, mm -hmm. You know, there's, it's almost like you need a master's <laughs> to, be able to, to be able to access funding or access resources resources because you know can you find even find on the web page right yeah. or do you have access to the internet exactly I mean those hurdles are so um, they're, they're so prohibitive mm -hmm. to people um, who are dealing with like family family trauma or health issues or financial instability that um, so the workshops you guys supply are so important and so that's something too I, I wanted to address with you guys is to please make sure you go to cvoeo.org um, they have a list of all of their workshops on there um, if you're interested if you want to get Get educated if you want to know what your rights are and um, and and what's out there for your support um, their website has all of those wonderful resources for you to utilize um, so please check that out um, you know an example of um, it just it just a quick example what's an example of uh, one of your workshops sure so two so one of our workshops is tenant skills and what that workshop includes is all the basics of a tenants rights so what what it means when you sign a lease what um, what a landlord can and can't do, um, what to do if you experience a problem in your home, um, what to do if you want to leave, what to do if you're asked to leave and you're not sure if it's legal or not. Um, and you know, in addition to that basic rights information, there's also the responsibilities and information. You know, how to how to be a good tenant. We one thing we really focus on is relationship building mm -hmm. and communication and making sure that there's a good. Good, good venue of yep. communication between uh, renters and landlords, because often that's where things can break down, and sometimes something that might be just a small issue gets elevated to a larger issue because of a lack of communication. Um, when things do break down, we have a hotline that folks can call. Um, our Vermont Tenants Hotline is a great resource for mm -hmm. folks, and we hear every day we get calls from people who are um, experiencing challenges in their rental housing, um, who are mm -hmm. receiving hundreds of dollars of increases in rent yep. uh, as well, or facing other issues. And so we talk them through their problems, help them figure out what their next steps are, and make referrals as needed. 
which is an incredible asset I mean for people mm -hmm. and and sometimes they don't know how to talk to their landlord um, and I know too I'm sure you guys probably hear about this as well is sometimes tenants don't realize that they do have rights that they don't need to have mold in their house or they mm -hmm. don't need that they that they should have certain you know they should have certain things near electrical outlets that could be dangerous right. for their children right. Um, right and those kinds of issues I'm sure you see that as well yes we, we, we of course we do see that and uh, it's not not necessarily a choice. When you have housing scarcity, when you have this type of housing crisis that we are having, sometimes people don't want to be on the street. They stay in this very mm -hmm. dangerous housing situation because they don't have a choice, because mm -hmm. they don't have the uh, accessibility or even the information to move forward. Mm -hmm. uh, and like you said, if they don't know their rights, of course, you know, and, and there is no guarantee that the landlord will actually address those issues <laughs> at all. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yes, it's. Um, it's, it's very difficult. We are hearing, um, and it's on the rental side uh, with tenants, and we hear it with mobile home residents as well. Uh, the housing stock in Vermont is old, mm -hmm. and you know, investment has been made when it comes to um, uh, address uh, some uh, some issues uh, with uh, some incentive for them not to actually access funding with matching, of, of course, mm -hmm. um, meaning that they have to put some of their money into it. But what is not to like there? because you're supposed to be providing safe housing. Mm -hmm. And yeah. if you are, you need to be able to maintain safe housing for your tenants. I mean, for mm -hmm. me, it's a question of community and responsibility. Yeah. We all are Vermonters. We all want the best for each other, I hope. And we need to build. <laughs> 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 oh, well, I know. You're going to say, oh, yes, this is the, the song that, you know, we, we yeah, usually. Yeah. No, but it's so true. But, but, but yeah. in, in reality, mm -hmm. as a citizen, as a responsible citizen, this is what you have to look to. It's really to know what you are offering mm -hmm. and to consensually uh, bring the, your best forward. Yep. There is help out there. There's help out there. It's, yep. not, it's not that there is none. Mm -hmm. um, and the, 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 the minimal that we might be able to bring forward mm -hmm. as a state is, um, is more than most other states actually do. Provide. Well, Vermont's uh, Vermont's one of those great markets where we do have a state legislature, and you know, passing that veto is is, is a classic example of that, where people actually listen and they care. Mm -hmm. um, you know, of course, you can never do too much, mm -hmm. but at least at least there is more here than you do see um, in a lot of other states. And um, you know, another thing I was thinking about is I, I wanted to ask you, what is um, you know, because you're in advocacy, so what is the number one thing that people bring to you? Uh, you know, some of the biggest concerns that you guys see come into your office? Uh, habitability issues. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, and, and what is that? Uh, meaning that uh, <laughs> the state of the home is not safe. Really? Um, yes. Yeah. Unsafe yes. living conditions. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, that's the, the first and f has been for the longest ever. Yeah, things like mold in the home or not ad not having adequate heat, not having an oh, adequate mm -hmm. bathroom facilities, mm -hmm. kitchen kitchen facilities, oh. um, holes in walls, mm -hmm. uh, pests. Also, we hear about these every day, and yes. and the challenges when they're. See, it's they're, really important for people to think about that. Well, ex exactly, and and people. But as Sandrine said before, uh, people are often mm -hmm. afraid to complain because when they're simply aren't enough homes out there, people yep. are afraid of losing their homes. And then this means that people who are traditionally subject to exclusion and segregation in their housing, so yeah. BIPOC folks, LGBTQ, LGBTQ plus folks, people with disabilities, people with children, people who already face barriers to mm -hmm. accessing, to, to, to barriers to fair housing and equal yep. access to housing are even more pinched when there isn't, aren't enough homes. And so they're even more, um, they can be even more reluctant to report these things uh, because they fear retaliation. But luckily, there are laws on the books which protect them both at the state, state and yeah, federal I would, level. I would, I would assume <laughs> that the state has the mm -hmm. tenants back um, and, and would require, I mean, I, I, I work for a property management company, but I don't really work in property management. I'm in the arts. <laughs> but, um, you know, that, the, that those protections are in place and that the uh, landlord is required to fulfill certain obligations to the tenant. Yes. And, um, you know, also I would hope, too, that there are laws in place where there's no recourse. So that a tenant has the capacity to, to, to try to advocate for themselves or their children or their family. And, and there is no way for the landlord to be like, ha ha, I guess who's not getting a lease next year because you did this and you made me spend this kind of money. Um, it, it, there are laws. I yes, checking? there. Because I don't know. There yeah. absolutely, there absolutely <laughs> are laws. Okay. Um, and. 
they don't always get followed okay. and they can be difficult to enforce and so that's mm -hmm. that's where the advocacy comes in okay. is to make sure that folks know what their rights are mm -hmm. and know wh when to identify when something is illegal because yep. um, sometimes things can be unfair and unjust but not illegal unfortunately but yep. there is a very clean clear line about what's legal and what isn't in terms of uh, fair housing law and okay. landlord tenant law and so um, we help people identify that and to advocate for their rights and to speak up when things aren't done and, and that's again really important I, I want to I want to let our viewers know um, to make sure that they know to call the hotline um, and 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 talk because they have this incredible resource for you guys to be able to reach out to them and talk about some of your problems the supports are there you are in a community that does care about you and your family um, and everybody wants you to be in safe and functioning house housing um, which I have heard I know we've all heard the uh, the horror stories on social media um, so it's it, it's nice to know you guys are there um, and so I kind of also wanted to talk to it um, this is the 55th anniversary of the Fair Housing Act mm -hmm. and so I kind of wanted to get your first of all a uh, overview of what the Fair Housing Act actually means for our viewership um, and, uh, and and in the anniversary and what that means for you Sure. Well, the, the Fair Housing Act was passed in 1968, mm -hmm. um, and it was it, it's part of the civil rights movement. This is what led to, led to, to to its passage. And what it does is it puts protections at the federal level against people being treated unfairly in their housing based on who they are, yep. based on their skin color, um, their. Uh, the, uh, where they're born, um, their sex, gender ide identity, or sexual orientation, um, whether they have a disability or not, mm -hmm. and, and other other factors. And what this means is that everyone has equal opportunity to housing choice and the right to be um, to, to to have a home and live in a home, buy a, buy a home, rent a home. Mm -hmm finance a home, live in a home free from discrimination or harassment. Um, and you know, I think it's important to note that this law has been on the books for the at the federal level for 55 years, and wow. we still have housing so you discrimination. Do you still <laughs> see, country. I mean, I guess that's yeah. the next question, yeah. mm -hmm. is do you still see people who are not in compliance with the Fair Housing Act? Absolutely. Of course. In Absolutely. Vermont, which actually, yes. mm -hmm. Vermonters like to think that maybe yes. they don't have that in this state, mm -hmm. but it, so. Yeah. You do see it. Yeah, the, 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 yeah. The, most of the complaints that come into mm -hmm. both Vermont Legal Aid and the Human Rights Commission are on the basis of disability, so people being treated unfairly based on having a, either a mental or physical disability mm -hmm. or being in recovery from substance abuse. Mm -hmm. um, and then these, this, this sort of second and third most common issues are based on race um, and also the, having children as well, the presence of minor children. Well, goodness and, gracious, you're not allowed to have kids. We're not even going to get right. talk about that. Yeah. And you're born a certain way we're never going to take care of that either this, mm -hmm. I mean it, it's terrible yeah you know and you think after 55 years we would have gotten somewhere um, and 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 right yes but uh, <laughs> enforcement is yeah. what uh, the key. problem lies yeah. it's mm -hmm. key yeah uh, if laws is, is fine mm -hmm. um, but you give people the choice to follow it or not but the consequences of not following it is not really there mm -hmm. the, so the enforcement the, the enforcement yeah. piece yeah. Um, the 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 burden is put on the uh, complainant, <gasps> which is usually the renters, the, oh, the people wow. being discriminated against. Really? So yeah, the, oh, yeah. plaintiff is the plaintiff is disproportionately is uh, disproportionately put on trial. Mm -hmm. Sounds like a, it sounds like a really bad rape case. Uh, uh, no, but no, I'm I'm just saying though. But that's the the burden of proof mm -hmm. is on the tenant, the um, which um, marginalizes a lot of people further, mm -hmm. um, and and that's unfortunately not really equitable. It'll yeah. be costly as well. Yeah. Exactly, and and wow. un unfortunate. That's unfortunate. And I didn't realize that. Yeah, and and when wow. someone is say facing mm -hmm. discrimination when they're looking for housing, when they're trying to rent an apartment, for example, if they know perhaps that they're being treated unfairly, they might, they still really want to get into that apartment, and so often they won't make a complaint or won't yeah. um, know what to do because they wouldn't want to jeopardize getting into that safe and stable housing. Uh, luckily, with the, with the fair housing law, you can file the complaint after the fact. 
So I want to also th thank, thank you both so much for being on the show. I, I very much, this is a very interesting conversation. I have learned a lot. I hope all of you have learned a lot as well. Um, if you do have housing questions, please reach out. Um, again, the hotline is at the bottom. Um, they're here to help you. Uh, there's a lot of help in the state of Vermont. Uh, this is an ongoing crisis in the state of Vermont. Um, I know uh, we didn't get to go into as much solution-based talking as I wanted, um, but uh, maybe for next time. Uh, thank you guys so much for all you do. And remember to reach out and stand up for your rights because tenants do have rights. People in mobile home communities have rights. The state is there to help you. And all you need to do is find the help. And we have access at the bottom of this uh, screen and ways that you can contact and reach out and see what your rights are. So thank you guys again so much for being here. Um, I'll see you guys again next month. Take care. Bye.